Alrighty. So reaction quotient example number one. We're going to synthesize some ammonia from its elements, nitrogen and hydrogen. This is also called the Haber process. We'll talk more about that next year. And I've already written the balanced chemical equation for you. So please notice that the molar ratio of nitrogen to hydrogen to ammonia is 1 to 3 to 2. And I also got an equilibrium constant of 0 0.06 liters squared over mole squared. We'll talk about how we get those units a little bit later. So I need to predict which direction this system will shift with these initial concentrations. Notice when I am giving you these initial concentrations, there's that little zero there. That's called a knot, as in an Irish knot. So what that means is you've got an initial concentration. So I'm going to write out the reaction quotient to start. I'm going to say Q equals concentration of ammonia, not, meaning initial, squared. And that's KNOT, not NOT. Then I've got the nitrogen concentration, not, no exponent there. I've got hydrogen, not, to the third power because I've got three moles in my balanced chemical equation. I'm going to fill in my values now. I wrote these out in scientific notation, but for clarity, I'm going to write them out in normal numbers. So ammonia is going to be 0 0.001, and I'm going to square that. And then I'm going to have nitrogen, which is going to be 0 0.00001, and that is going to be to the first power or nothing written. And then I've got my hydrogen, which is going to be 0 0.00001. Two, I'm going to cube that, and when I solve this out, you're going to get a very, very small number. You're going to get 8.0 times 10 to the negative 10th, and the units will be the same as the equilibrium constant, liters squared over moles squared. All right. Uh, what my secret is, is to get scientific notation, is I turn my calculator into scientific notation mode, and then I don't have to move the decimal place over. What is this going to tell us? Well, K is going to be your 0 0.06 liters squared over moles squared. So, Q in this case is a lot less than K. That means to get to equilibrium, I have to increase Q until it gets to K. That means I have to shift my products to the right side. So that means that equilibrium, in order for it to happen, the reaction will shift right. And to get to equilibrium, more product will be created. So let's take a look at the next example here, or you can pause the video and process this for a second. Next example, same exact same thing happens. I am going to write out my expression for my reaction quotient, which is the exact same thing as on the previous screen. Um, just a sensitive IB thing here. If they ask you to write the reaction quotient and you don't put the knot, they will take marks off. So that's why I'm rewriting it again so you have it ingrained that that knot needs to be there. So N2 knot, H2 knot to the third power. And so I'm now going to fill in these new values that I've got. I've got concentration of ammonia of 0 0.001, that's going to be squared, divided by concentration of N2, concentration of H2, the third power, and when I solve that one out, I get 0 0.20 liters squared over moles squared. 
So what does this tell us? Well, k is still equal to that 0 0.06 liters squared over moles squared. So that means that q in this case is greater, not so much greater, but greater than k. So that means that I have too much product now. I've got too much product to get to equilibrium. So I am going to now shift left, creating more reactant until equilibrium is reached. So there are our first two examples of reaction quotient problems.